All right, in this video, what I'm going to do is take you through how to run tests, your PHP unit test, that is, using PHP Storm. Okay, so there, I guess there are a lot of ways that you can run tests. Primarily, you do it on the command line, but sometimes it's just easy to click a button or right click and then click an option and get it started. So I thought that's why I would cover PHP Storm in this example. All right, with that, let's begin. Now, okay, so we'll move it over. So here we are here in PHP Storm. And the first thing that you need to do is check that you have PHP or a PHP interpreter or CLI interpreter set up that has Xdebug available. Now I'll step back out of that because I was checking that before I started the video. Now this is on Mac OS, but in preferences on Windows or Linux will be, uh, I believe exactly the same. To find it in PHP Storm Preferences, just filter by PHP. I already have. Come down to Languages and Frameworks, then click on PHP. Now here, you're gonna see CLI Interpreter. And okay, yes, I'm using a slightly older version, but let's not worry about that. Click on your, your button there. I'm not quite sure what that button's called. And you'll see here on the right that I have Xdebug 2.7.2 set up as a debugger so I can do this and I'm ready to go. If you don't have that, get your version of PHP set up with Xdebug and ready to go. Come back, make sure it's ready here, and then you can follow on. Now, since I've got that, I'm gonna cancel out of that, cancel out of that, and I'm gonna go to, yep, I have a test here. Now, what you can do, I'll just make that smaller, is I guess the, the biggest way is you can, I believe, right click on an entire test directory. And you'll see here, or I'm kind of double tapping on the magic pad here on the, on the Mac, you have run, debug, and run test with coverage. Now, if you just want to run the test, you just click this option. If you want to debug it, say you want to set a breakpoint, and look at a value because maybe it's not quite working as you would expect, use this option. If you want a coverage report, then you click this option. Now I'm not gonna cover this one in this video because I don't think it's really as pertinent. I'm just gonna sort of step through these two here. So we'll start off by just running everything. Now what you see here is when it kicks off, you see the, the run dialog opens up or the run plugin or option. I'm not actually sure what this is quite called, but you'll see that every test runs, we'll actually maximize that up a bit there. And you can see here kind of quickly, the status of the test. So whether it succeeded or failed, you can see here from this icon that there were some problems. All these green ticks indicate that these tests passed. So we'll sort of skip down, we'll come down to one here and expand it out and you see that one of them failed. Now, if we go down, you can see sort of more details that test with data set number three passed, but test with data set zero, one, and two didn't. If you click on that on the right hand side over here, you can then see the reason why it failed. Now, what I do really like about PHP Storm is that it does a pretty decent job of filtering out a lot of not necessarily relevant information as to why something went wrong and sort of letting you then focus in on what actually worked. Sorry, what actually is relevant to look at. Now you can see here it says failed, asserting that two strings are identical. We expected to see this. We actually saw that. And then you can click here in a pretty trippy window. Okay, this isn't the best of examples, but then you can see more why, um, like a difference between an expected value and an actual value. Now this is really good if you have, say, a much larger string, uh, because sometimes in the console, it may not sort of be the easiest to, to make out what the difference is. But in this window, it really is. It's really easy to work with. Now, and we can also see here that we can then click straight to the test in question on the particular line that caused the problem or where the test failed. Now, if I were to go down, 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 do I see any other sort of nasty things? No. Okay, so let's then have a look at some of these buttons here on the side. Now, what happens if we click this one is it will rerun all of the tests that we just ran. If we click this button here, it will just rerun the failed tests. Now, if you have say one or a handful that failed, 
then you don't want to keep rerunning the entire test suite. You just want to rerun, I would assume, the tests that fail because they're the ones you want to know most about and fix because the others are fine. You don't need to be concerned to them. So let's just see that. This is not like a live scenario, but let's just sort of see just for the sakes of this example what happens. So we click that. And then you see we get a much smaller list. So you can see here that we have, um, that we have sort of, uh, yeah, three failing tests there, or test classes, I should say. And then within those, we have, say, a number of tests within those specifically that are failing. Now, this one here is a class that I haven't worked on. Same with this one. So I'm going to sort of stop looking at those and come into just this one. And I'll see here, why did that data set fail? And hopefully we see as before, a little blur on the Mac there, that, yeah, okay. So it kind of is, I guess, another example of seeing um, the difference between expected and actual results. Now, by the looks of it, yeah, okay, so it says here, here's, now this is why it's a good example. Because in this case here, it says the contents have differences only in the line separator. So if you looked at them, you can't visually detect a difference. But if you look here, you can see that the one on the left has carriage return line feeding, carriage return line feed as a line separator, whereas the one on the right has just a line feed. So it's good at showing you like the, the differences quite acutely. Now, if we look down here, this button here will do the auto test. And I believe that's when you then change your test and save it. PHP, PHP Storm will then detect that and rerun that test. So that can be handy as a, to save you just that bit more time. This button here is if you're already running tests and you just want to stop running them. I actually am not too familiar with these two. I believe this is more not really for testing. It's more where you want to keep the run dialog. Uh, up here is good for, I guess, like with your classes in, if we open up the project, oh, and we do have the project view open. Uh, if you want to sort of filter on files and sort files and so forth, but in this case, filter tests, sort tests. So just make them easier for you to sort of manage and make your way through if you had a lot. So for example, here, you can show only your past tests, not relevant if we're only running fail tests, show only your ignored tests, sort them alphabetically, sort by duration, and then expand all or collapse all, expand all. And then what have we got here? Go to the next fail test and so on. So definitely have a look at more of those. Now, what I'm going to show from this point onwards is, is kind of more really just a um, another version of the same theme, if you will. So before we started here, right at the top level of test directory. Now, if we come down to a particular test directory, say this is a set of response classes, and this is in Zen Diactoros, which is now part of the Laminus project, we get the same thing. If you right click, you come down and you see run, debug, and run with coverage. Now, if we come into a particular test, my test class, you see the same thing. So you can see at various levels that these options are available. So that allows you to sort of just pick at a certain level of granularity and run those particular set of tests. Now, let's say we're inside this class and we want to run all the tests from inside here. Well, then you can right click on any of these, uh, this icon here, because this indicates that the tests for this class have already been run and one or more have failed. Um, so you could click on that one there and then you get just the, the tests uh, context menu. If you scroll down here, you can see here that this test is passed. And if we click on that, it will just run this particular test. So let's just see that happen. Okay, it's nice when you see some green. Um, and so on and so forth, sort of all the way through these tests. So that's, I guess I came across this a little or decided to get into this a little bit more recently because I was working through this particular class and didn't want to sort of keep flicking to the command line because I'm not much of a fan of the PHP Storm command line. Um, I'm not totally against it. I just prefer the GNOME or Mac terminal and thought, well, instead of flicking between, wouldn't it be great if, and then accidentally clicked on this and found out, that, yes, you could run the test right from here. Stay in sort of mental context where you are and not have to flip around and change. And I just found it just works really sweetly. Now, 
a look at that other option is let's say for example that um, where's a test that actually I guess sort of does something here we go in this particular test here we're sort of working um, with an object and we've sort of done something other than maybe sort of very simplistic test and let's say that I wanted to see what that was let's say that this test failed and I didn't think it should fail and I felt there was something sort of going wrong here so I wanted to have a look at it so what we do here is we then set a breakpoint I'll then click on this and then I'll click a debug and if it's going to be my friend it'll stop there oh yes it has because you can see here by the the usual um, stop on breakpoint we've got the line highlighted we've got the indication that we've stopped at that breakpoint and so now if I wanted to then have a look at the value of that, I believe I can then add that to a watch. Where are we here? Add to watches. And you can see here that that is a Zend Diactoros stream object. If we then expand down here, we can start to sort of see more about it. Uh, there's no stream there. I, I don't actually know anything about this at this point in time. So I'm just sort of experimenting. Uh, we can see some sort of details. Um, if I wanted to look and uh, maybe, oh, here we go. You can see here where that's pointed to. So we can see a few details. And if I want to just set a watch on that there, where are we? Okay, so you can see where that file would have been. In this case, it's a mocked up file system. So it's only for testing purposes. But I guess to, to, to reiterate this point, um, this is also an excellent example of how if you get stuck, if tests are failing and that you feel that they shouldn't be, and maybe they should be, you can come in quite quickly, set a breakpoint or several, step through the code and sort of find out what exactly is going wrong. There's no need for doing things like the dumping and that sort of uh, caper. There's no need to sort of guess, to sort of bash your head against the desk or slam your hands or whatever you do when you get a bit frustrated. You can come in, set breakpoints and just look at what the value of variables are at that point in time. So anyway, what else do we have here? Um, I think that's about it for this short video. I hope you liked what you saw. Um, if you thought it was valuable, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click on the bell notification icon to know when more videos are released. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment with what you thought of the video. And I'll see you in another web development chat with Matt video. Talk to you next time.